Hello. Today I'm going to offer you some insight as to what I do in my spare time as being single and not watching much TV apart from if Busters allows a lot of time on my hands to tinker and stuff. So I'm going to give you an idea of all the fun and games I get up to in my spare time by showing you around the bungalow. As you can see at the moment I'm focusing on my um, small collection of boat anchor radios. Um, mainly Heath Kit and Hallicrafters. Um, sort of tinkering with them at the moment. At the bottom here we've got the um, Heath Kit GR54 receiver. Covers from around about 200 kilohertz to 30 megahertz with a wee gap around the 160 meter band which is a pity but um, I'm trying to sell this off at the moment. Just above it, we have a Heathkit DX60B AM and CW transmitter. Uh, that needs a bit of work. Um, mainly, it sort of gets a bit um, scratchy around about there. And I can't tune the output beyond that because the, me um, the meter just seems to fly up. But I'm going to work on that. Above it here we've got the Heathkit HG10 VFO, that's Variable Frequency Oscillator. That's um, for the um, transmitter I just showed you below. That needs a wee bit of work. Above it is a twin Twinplex um, receiver that I built probably around about six months ago. And um, a couple of coils here. It's based around a single twin triode valve uh, type 19. Over here you can see um, one of the coils plugged in. I um, run that off of 10 9 volt batteries hooked up in series which can be 90 volts for the plate and I use a pair of D batteries. I'm going through a diode which you probably cannot see but that's okay just take my word for it. That gives about a one volt drop. Now if we step back a wee bit, I've got my Helicrafters SX115 receiver. Um, it's a handband only receiver. Um, covers the 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 meter bands. It's got about 18 valves in it and it works pretty nice, although I'm going to replace the um, filter cap. Just below it, we got the, what is it, a HT32B transmitter. That needs a bit of work, actually. Um, besides um, replacing the filter capacitors, I'm not getting any output on it beyond a certain point. I've been um, probing around it with my um, oscilloscope. and sort of found where it stops. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how to fix it. But, yeah, something like this has got about 700 volts running through it on the output so I'm pretty damn careful to um, make sure I don't stick my hands where they don't belong um, lest I have a shock and my hand flies back and punches myself in the mouth. On to other things. Over here I have my um, analog modular synthesizer mainly um, consisting of um, synthesizers.com modules with a few um, STG Sound Lab modules um, as well, such as the lovely Mancato filter, which really kicks ass. Um, it's probably one of my favourite modules there, as well as the wave folder to the left of it. Um, um, the Suit and Tie guy um, who um, runs STG Sound Labs made a couple of um, demos which I really recommend you watch because uh, as, as well as being entertaining they're rather informative. Now below that is a high watt amplifier although it's not a true high watt because I built it myself. Um, I got it from bought the kit as a kit from um, Vintage High Watt Restorations. Took a week off from work to build it and it sounds damn fine. Um, I can understand why I wanted a high watt for so long. So, you know, people like um, Robert Fripp and um, Jethro Tull in the 70s um, used high watts, as well as The Who, whom I, uh, I, I adore. Below that is a Sun um, 100S. Doesn't belong to me, but it's a damn fine amp. Um, don't use it much because the high watts just bloody good. Um, just blows it out of the water. Below that is a Marshall Quad. If you don't know what it is, 
well, I don't need to explain it to you. Probably best you look it up. Um, underneath is a bunch of various fuzz boxes, um, mainly Roger Mayer ones, with a Fox Tone Machine clone that I built, um, which I call the Pox Cone Machine because it had a bit of a twisted sense of humour. I do like building my own pedals. So over here, I've got a Univox Super Fuzz clone that I built, which I called Amy Pond's Ginger Fuzz. Um, in the name of good taste, I'm not going to explain what I mean by that, but um, yeah, I think Amy Pond was probably Doctor Who's best companion yet. Um, another one of my pedals, pardon the shaky camera work, is the Dirty Acid Fuzz, which is pretty much a Germanium Mosrite Fuzzrite. Um, I built that because um, DAM um, builds um, boutique pedals. Cost a hell of a lot more than I'm willing to pay for, but I can't say I've actually ever tried one. Um, they're meant to be damn good. Down in this corner, we have my little ham radio section with my ICOM IC746, uh, MFJ tuner below, as well as an SWR meter. Um, you would have seen my other video before um, with showing off my um, lovely G5RV Junior um, antenna. So um, you would have probably seen this in action ever so briefly. But yeah, I'm pretty heavily into amateur radio at the moment. Um, what can I say? It's fun. It's really fun. What I'm waving around here is my little Yaesu VX3R. I'm not sure if this camera auto-focuses or not. But I carry this with me wherever I go. So in case my train's delayed or I'm stuck on a train, I can do something constructive rather than sitting there complaining on Facebook, which I do a lot, especially when it comes to public transport. But I shan't get into that. If anyone lives in Melbourne and uses the public transport system, specifically the trains, you probably know what I mean. Down below is my case for my Flying V. Yeah, as you probably guessed, because you saw my amplifier, I also play guitar. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stop it there, because um, at about seven and a half minutes, you're probably on the verge of falling asleep. But this gives you a rough idea of what I do in my spare time, because there's bugger all on TV worth watching. Anyway, have fun, and see you later.